she should have known that to support a racist is problematic. Mm. Um, her children are, are biracial, and she, her family is one of the families in, that in the 70s could not have lived in any of Donald Trump's buildings. So... I've mentioned after the ABC News debate that The View, which is part of ABC News, has quickly become actually the perfect representation of the journalistic integrity of that august institution. If you want to know what ABC News stands for, honestly, don't watch the evening news. Don't watch Good Morning America with George Snuffleupagus. Don't watch their Sunday show this week. Watch The View because it is part of ABC News. And it perfectly represents who they are. Uh, no better than what we saw from Sonny Hostin, one of the members of their panel here. She is race obsessed in the most divisive, angry, hateful way. And we've seen it play out in multiple, multiple ways. But what we saw yesterday from her may actually be the worst of the worst. She's examining the story of Patrick Mahomes' wife, um, Brittany Mahomes. Brittany Mahomes is white. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, I believe is biracial. Um, and they have children. And Brittany Mahomes has committed the cardinal sin that anyone in public life can do. She has expressed support for Donald Trump for president. Now, when Patrick Mahomes was asked about this, he said, listen, I don't get into politics. I got friends who are conservative Republicans. I got friends who are liberal Democrats. It doesn't matter to me. I love them for who they are, and I'm not going to remove anyone from my life based on how they vote. Kind of a mature way to approach the world, frankly, and it was refreshing to see. Sonny Hostin was pissed off about that, and she was certainly pissed off that Brittany, Holmes, Br Brittany Mahomes would uh, support Donald Trump. So she decided to talk about it on The View, and well, she crossed a Rubicon here with this analysis. Take a look. Sure. And that, yeah, that does make me hopeful, actually, that this swift effect uh, will speak to more women about the true character of Donald Trump and, and, and will turn them away. But to your initial point, I know you said we weren't going to talk about it, but I was. Um, it just seems to me that since she is in an interracial marriage, um, she should have known that to support a racist is problematic. Mm. Um, her children are, are biracial and she, her family is one of the families in, that in the 70s could not have lived in any of Donald Trump's buildings. So it just seems to me that maybe she's just not that politically savvy or maybe she's just not well, read in. Granted, but it's all we know is that she liked a Trump yeah. post. We don't know. She, she hasn't has since, stated she has since that she supported him, because... but that's fair to interpret that she may have, but we don't know that she's a supporter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you to Newsbusters for the clip that we're going to watch again and break down here because that is the most disgusting, despicable, uh, hateful thing that anybody can do to, to drag someone's children into this. To, into her own racist dementia and try and, and understand something. This is what the political left does, not just here in America, but look, look at the history of the last hundred years, whether it's in the Soviet Union or Maoist China or Fidel Castro's Cuba. And yes, I am drawing direct connections between the American political left and those totalitarian, authoritarian, communist countries. They divide children and their parents. That's what they do. And we're seeing it every single day in this country. I mean, uh, if you have children, if you have children who are in high school or in college, I wonder if you and you support Donald Trump, how often have you heard from your own children some kind of plea from them? Please, how can you support him? Please, you know, they, they, they're, they're told through social media, through TikTok, through Instagram. And they're also told basically by their professors and their high school teachers that you need to confront your own parents on their inherent systemic racism. It's been happening for the last eight, 10 years here in this country, but it's been happening, well, for the last hundred years in left-wing authoritarian nations. And that's what she's doing here, this Sonny Houston. And I wanna break it down a little bit more. Let's watch again. Yeah. 
actually that this swift effect uh, will speak to more women about the true character of Donald Trump and, and, and will turn them away. But to your by the way, let's just stop there for a minute. I don't even know what they're referring to, but it's like, oh, I hope this will um, speak to who Donald Trump truly is so that women will get the picture. Oh, for God's sake, are you serious? It's been nine years since Donald Trump came down that escalator. We have heard the constant. These women are still pissed off that the Access Hollywood tape didn't stop Donald Trump. And so every single day, oh, well, maybe this will convince women. Maybe this will convince women. Maybe this will explain to everyone that he's racist. Maybe this will explain to everyone that he's sexist. Maybe this will... I think the message has been heard loud and clear. Here's what you hate to admit, Sonny Hostin. People don't believe you. They think you're wrong. They have their own brains. They've come up with their own opinion that is contrary to yours. It happens. Deal with it. I mean, honestly, is there anyone in this country who doesn't know who Donald Trump is? Is there anyone in this country who doesn't know what Donald Trump thinks? Is there anyone in this country who hasn't heard what Donald Trump has said or done? It's so boring. It's so boring and it's so, frankly, irrelevant. And that's what kills them more than anything else, that they are irrelevant and people don't care what they say. People don't care what they think. All right, so, so and then this is my favorite part here uh, of this entire video. Your initial point, I know you said we weren't going to talk about it, but I was. Um, it just seems to me. I know you said we're not going to talk about it, but I'm, I'm going to. And the it that they weren't going to talk about was the fact that Brittany Mahomes is white and Patrick Mahomes is black. And... And I guess when Whoopi Goldberg set this topic up, she said, you know, that's that's not I guess in Whoopi's mind, it wasn't important or relevant. And maybe Whoopi Goldberg recognizes that it's just so odious and repulsive to make every single issue they talk about about race. But Sonny Hostin can't help herself. It's all she's got. So, of course, we're going to talk about the racial aspect of this. But it's not enough. It's not enough to point out that she's white. And apparently that means she's got to think or act a certain way because her husband is black. But it goes beyond that. We've got to talk about their little children. Is there anything more despicable than that? Seriously, anything? That since she is in an interracial marriage... Um, she should have known that to support a racist is problematic. Right. Um, her children are, are biracial and she, her family is one of the families in, that in the 70s could not have lived in any of Donald Trump's buildings. So, By the way, that's a debunked lie, but it doesn't stop them. It's ABC News after all. It just seems to me that maybe she's just not that politically savvy or maybe she's just not well, read in. Granted, but yeah, she's stupid. See, anyone who supports Donald Trump has got to be stupid. So here's Sonny Hostin using her platform and her microphone and the imprimatur of ABC News to uh, call Brittany Mahomes stupid because of her political positions, trying to divide her with her husband, Patrick Mahomes, and inflict guilt upon her as a mother because in some way she's betraying her own children. But it's funny, I, I got to guess that maybe Brittany Mahomes being in an interracial marriage, raising interracial children, maybe Brittany Mahomes is actually thinking like this. Maybe she's saying, you know what? I want my children to transcend race. I want my children to judge each and every individual American, not based on the color of their skin, but based on who they are and their behaviors and their actions and their ethics and their morals, because that's what makes a person who they are, not the color of their skin. In fact, I bet Brittany Mahomes is trying to demonstrate to her children that she wants them to be open and tolerant of people of all races, just like she is with her own husband. 
But Sunny Hosting, I guess, can't understand that kind of thought process. But there's something going on today about the political left in America and their obsession with the complications of mixed race relationships. Not only do we have that disgusting display on The View, but if you're a liberal, you'll turn right over from ABC to MSNBC when The View is over, and you'll be greeted with this kind of brilliant national security analysis about who will handle Russia better, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. Now, now I know if you're using your brain and logic and your ability to weigh these issues on an intellectual basis, you will say, well, we know what happened on Dundal under Donald Trump. Under Donald Trump, Europe was convinced by his ambassadors and his secretary of state to divest from the uh, uh, natural gas pipeline that Russia had installed there so that they cut off Russia's income delivering natural gas to Europe, thus making Europe less dependent on Russia, thus bringing down the price of gas and oil, thus starving the Russian war machine that is fueled completely on international oil and gas prices. And at the same time, the Trump administration funded Ukraine with weapons so that they could defend themselves against a Russian incursion. And oh, by the way, I remember Russian insurgents showing up in Syria to lend a hand to that civil war and American troops killed them overnight and there were no more Russian incursions into Syria. That's how Trump handled Russia. Now, how did Kamala Harris handle Russia as vice president? Well, they reversed that energy policy, thus fueling and funding the Russian war machine. And then when Russian tanks lined up on the border of Ukraine, they did nothing to stop it and allowed those tanks to roll into Ukraine. And the only thing they had to offer was to give Zelensky asylum, which Zelensky said, no, actually, I'd like to stay and fight. And it was at that moment when Joe Biden, he decided, oh, well, maybe we can make some money on all these weapons and keep this war going in perpetuity. So most people would look at those two records and say, you know what, I think maybe Donald Trump will do better with Russia than Kamala Harris has shown she's done with Joe Biden against Russia. But <laughs> you'd be wrong because if you are an analyst for MSNBC, none of that matters. There's only one thing that matters in handling Vladimir Putin in Russia. Let's see what it is. But Kamala Harris would be just the opposite. Why? Because she's an inspiration. Not only is she mm. positive, does she bring hope and optimism, but as a black woman, uh, the, the product of a mixed marriage, she will inspire millions of people throughout the world. Our credibility as a nation, you know, th that we would be able to allow, our country is so great that we're allowed a woman like that to become the ch commander in chief, the president of the United States. That is going to send a powerful message all over the world. People like Vladimir Putin are going to say, hey, wait a minute. These guys, you know, they truly have democratic country. They truly are representative. They truly are fighting for all their people. And Kamala Harris is a manifestation of that. Wow. That, that, is, some, that is some high end intellectual foreign policy analysis that sadly you're not going to get here. I mean, I don't even know why you're watching me right now when you can go to MSNBC and get that. Vladimir Putin will be impressed that Kamala Harris is an inspirational figure who is a product of a mixed marriage, and therefore, he'll be kept at bay. You know, that would make a lot of sense, and I would totally buy into it because clearly this guy is smarter than me. I mean, just look at his tie. Except for one thing that... Sadly, I think whoever was hosting this show on MSNBC wasn't smart enough to bring up and interject, but forgive me the opportunity to do that on her behalf. Excuse me, sir, but how does that make any sense considering Barack Obama was also a international inspirational figure who also was the product of a mixed marriage, a mixed racial marriage, and during his time as president, Vladimir Putin literally invaded Ukraine and took the Crimean Peninsula.
Can you explain that to me? Could you? You can't? You can't? Okay. Well, seriously, nice tie. You got that going for you. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to throw down with Trump on this whole who's best against Russia thing. You know, what with the record and all. 